mai, piki mai, kaki mai. Kia ora koutou whanau. Lovely to have you at our chamber today. Um, I'm, I'm conscious that we've got everybody here and it's lovely to see you all. A very warm welcome to you all. And our, I'm going to move on first, if we could start, uh, with our karakia. Uh, and, and then we'll move on to item six. Very warm welcome, Councillor, Ly uh, Councillor Corbyn. Lovely to have you with us. Brilliant. So, could we start with a karakia, please? to uh, welcome uh, everyone to this afternoon's meeting and it's wonderful to see our chamber so full today. Uh, first of all, I'd like us to turn to item number six and, and I'd like to invite Councillor Barber up here with us and just before I hand over to him, I'd like to take this opportunity of the declaration of our Komatua Papa Jerry have been with us today. And Papa Jerry has been with our council for a long time. And what we've just done with Tūtira Mai just reminds us of how far we have come and how he has led us and the change that we're making as a council to make sure that Te Rao Māori, our wellbeing of our, all of our community is reflected in everything we do. Uh, not a day goes by when we don't think of the influence and the direction that we are making, and thank you for your leadership. Um, just some little facts that some of us might not know, but I know Fano will certainly know about our Papa Jerry. He was born on the 10th of March in 1941. Well, and that would have been a special time in the world, 1941. Very special time for his Fano, and some really challenging times. He was born in Hastings. He was educated at Pokawa School in the Waipawa district. He finished school at the age of 15 and went to work at the Tomoana Freezing Works at the age of 15. Hume industry, Industries and the Big Smoke in Wellington. 
And then Watties, he did a, a brief stint there, and he was had sharing both locally, South Island, and Australia. And many, many people in our community acknowledge and recognise and remember Papa Jerry from his days as share, leading sharing, big sharing gangs. And I myself, with our business in town, remember you coming into our family business and uh, buying lots of wonderful food to share with, the, with your people. Uh, forestry in New Zealand and sharing off season in 1992 set up Kohangareo in his hometown of Havelock North, which is still going today. He has, he's been a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit in 2008 and has been the Hastings District Council Komatua since 2011, now 10 years old. So, Papa Jerry, we welcome you, and I would now welcome Councillor Barber to say a few words, and then we will be excited about this declaration that you will make today. Kia ora no tātou. Tēnā, tēnā tātou, tātou katoko, hui hui mai nei tēnei, tēnei rā nui whakahira hira. Kei te tautou koe ngā mihi kua, kua mihia, i tō mātou koromatua Sandra Kia koe, um, Jerry, uh, koe ke nei ki tēnei wā, uh, ke whakapuaki iā koe uh, tō whakapuaki tanga uh, ki runga ki tēnei o ngā, o ngā kaunihira. Mihi ana kia koe, uh, mou i, I mahi nei, mahi tahi nei me te, me te kaunihira, uh, mō ngā tau e hia nei. Uh, kua, kua, kua rongo nei mātou uh, i te rārangi o ngā mahi, kua tutuki iā koe uh, i rotu ngā tau. Ano reira tēnei mātou o te kaunihira, mihi ana kia koe. Uh, mihi ana kia koe o te raki tō whānau, uh, kua haramai. Uh, ka hui rānaki uh, maunga uh, tēnā koutou haramai rā. Ka hui rānaki marae tēnā koutou haramai rā. Nā ti uh, rangi koe ana ke uh, hapū, uh, nau mai, piki mai kake mai ki tēnei o ngā, o ngā whare. Uh, kei te mihi e te āhuatanga o ngā tini atu ngā mate. Uh, haunga ngā mate, uh, ko ngā mea mā wiwi ana. Uh, tēnei mate karauna, tēnei mate uru tā, e hora, e hora nei te ao. Uh, ana ko tātou katoa era, uh, ko a pehi nei te, i taua mate. Uh, nō reira, e mihi ana i tērā āhuatanga. Uh, o eno, uh, ko koe te, te kaupapa, uh, i tēnei wā, Jerry, uh, ko rungo nei au i ngā, I ngā mahi, o eno tētahi mea kāri i kōrero tia, uh, ko koe te pihopao tō, tō pekanga o te hauke. Uh, kei konei koe uh, hei, hei amo kapua uh, mo te hāhi, uh, te whakapono uh, ki tō tātou nei matu nui te rangi, nō reira tēnā koe. Tēnā koe ki a koe e pihopa, uh, Fred Morley, uh, hei pihopa, pihopa anō uh, mo te hāhi kua, kua harama nei te tautoko. Uh, hoi no, um, just want to uh, support uh, Sandra's words and um, acknowledge uh, Jerry. Uh, he is, he is um, I think his, his, his mahi goes under underappreciated sometimes. Um, we have the, the, the big events, the, the big manuhiri that come into Hastings, and uh, Jerry is often uh, the kupu tuatahi. Te kana te kōrero, ko te amorangi ki mua, ko te hāpai o ki muri. Um, uh, those that, uh, that carry the word of God are normally at the front, and those that, uh, uh, you know, uh, do the mahi come in behind. And often Jerry is, uh, is that the first word uh, to whakawātea, uh, the huarahi, whether that's through karakia, whether that's through uh, mihi whakatau. And so it's, it's a big job, you know, um, it's a big job. And, and Jerry, uh, you know, we just want to acknowledge you for the, for the mahi that you do. So uh, thank you uh, uh, for your mahi, and uh, well, today you get to, um, I think Jerry was felt a little bit left out when uh, everyone got up to do their uh, declarations, when, uh, when councillors uh, joined the council, and also the Māori um, uh, joint committee and, and other committees, and so, uh, you know, I took on the, uh, that uh, Jerry should have his own um, uh, attestation uh, today, Jerry. So, Nana, ane mātou mihi ana kia koe, te nā koe. Nau mai hara mai te kōrero nei tō whakapua ki tāna. And um, while, he, while he comes up, uh, he, he had his birthday uh, 
Um, when was it? When was your birthday, Jerry? Last week. Last week. Last week. Last week. Day. Day. Jerry, I can't give you a hug, but I can yeah. do this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Kia ora. Kei te mema. Kei te kauni hira a rohe, o hira taunga. Ko ahau. Ko ahau and Jerry hapuku. I o te ana ka whai a hahau i pono me te toke e teke i ronga hoki i te mutunga ki mai nei i aku pukenga. Me aku whakatau hoki ki whakatutuki ki a mahi ana hoki i te, mama, i te mana whakahaere. Te mana whakatau me ngā momono. Mahi kua uhia ki runga ki a au ki whiwhi whainga mō te takiwā o hera taunga. He kau mātua o te kauni hera a rohe o hera taunga. A hoki i te ture kawana tanga i taio 2002 i te ture kawana tanga a taio whakapai me te hui. 1987, me tahi ture hano rānei. E me whaka, whaka o tēnei e rā, te mano rua te ka. We are now announce you one of Hastings District Council's leading Koromatua Papajiri. We are thrilled and excited about our journey together, our last 10 years and our 10 years in front of us. You are one of us, one of our whānau, and we're absolutely thrilled to have you as one of us. On a personal note, when I became the Mayor in 2017, I remember how you led me in. And we've been together for a long time, and we will continue to be together. Thank you very much for being in today. Anyone else like to say anything? Um, any, any other whānau want to say anything? Um, but it was lovely to have you doing the wonderful work and the wonderful mahi you do for our, for our community, for our young people, for our council, and just being for a, a wonderful role model to, to everyone. Kia ora. Kia ora. So that, that is our
I just want to say this is you unique because I started something, son. <laughs> and I think that uh, those that are going to follow us are going to do the same recipient and be something that would be of honor to them and their family. I brought all my, my great grandchildren. You see all those little ones at the back? They're my great grandchildren. It's about, there's about 10 of them over there. And all the other ones, because they come from our Kohanga. And here we've got Tamariki that want to come to Kohanga there, or it's just in Havelock North, 13 <laughs> Sifton Street. <laughs> Been going for 28 years. Oh. So, as Sandra said, we started in 1992, uh, along with my late wife. And um, we started because we had some of those who are working now were the first recipients of, of our starting of our kohanga. So they, they are sitting up there, and um, now they're the kaimahi, the kaiako, and so they just follow on from what um, we established as uh, a family to have a kohanga reo. It wasn't hard to convince the council that uh, we wanted a kohanga reo, so everything flowed, and so it started. So no, no reira he mokopunuma, I brought them along so they can have something to view in, the, in their minds in the future and see what, the, this, what is happening in this uh, whare. I think some of them are awed by the occasion to, to know that this is where all the things that are made concerning them in the future for their well-being. And just to say that we are acknowledging all those... Uh, their, the tanifa or the, the, what do you call it, this coney, this coronavirus thing. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's a problem that maybe we're lucky it hasn't been affected in our Hedatonga area yet, but never know. It's happening worldwide. So, ke kaha kutau, ke manaki tanga, ke o tamariki, ke o mokopuna, hey, whakarongo te taringa. So if we listen to the things that is being um, given to each and every one of us about this uh, Kony uh, virus thing, we will be safe. Yeah. Just got to keep doing the things that have been uh, a proclamation from the, our Prime Minister that we had. So, Nareira, ke akoto, e te koa te hari o te nākau, ke akoe mo tenei.
forgot something to tell you how I got the name Owen. My mother, in all her wisdom, gave me this name after the midwife that brought me into this world in here, the Hastings Hospital. Oh. And so we have a few Owens around the place. Owen Purcell, Owen White, I'm a, so they're all named after this um, midwife. I said to my mother, when you give me a Māori name? She said, you should be proud of that name, son. I said, why is that? Of this lady that put you into the world. Oh. You're lucky. So all, all my other 12 siblings all got Māori names. And I'm the only one that hasn't got a Māori name. But we can chancel a Jerry, so. But that, that's just a bypass. Oh, and the data, uh, kia ora tata. Kia ora tata. We look forward to doing some wonderful, wonderful, more great business together in the future. Kia ora Thank, you, Thank you, Papa Jerry. And lovely to see you all, Fano. Thank you for coming in today, making the effort. It's lovely to have you here. Councillors, um, I have a um, recommendation there. Would I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Councillor Redstone, seconded by Councillor uh, Sholem. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, Councillors, I'm just going to move now to item seven. Um, and we have a very, very special recognition here uh, today. And this is a, a great honour for us to be able to recognise two outstanding people. Um, two outstanding people that have given so much to our community, have been there for our people for 30 years, 34 years actually, in the Flagsmere community. And they're going to be greatly missed. And I'd now like to invite Kay Run and Hartley to come forward. And I'd also like our ambassador, Flagsmere Councillor, Councillor O'Keefe, to come also come forward, please. Which one is weird? This one, the Takaya. I don't really need this, but I'll, I'll have it just in case I miss anything. A kia ora tātou, ngā mihi pakatau. Tēnā koe, <coughs> e te pīhopa o te matua nui te rangi. Nā re kā nui te mihi nui kā koe, e te pāia mā re kura, ngā mihi me tōa. Ho, hāli, kia ora korua, a nei te... Uh, the, the, kai, the kai karanga, the kai korero, the, the tangata, the evangelical tangata, ki roto o pahara keke. Uh, every so often in this beloved village, and indeed in the wider, do you come across people that, uh, well, they're special. They are special. And they go beyond the call of duty. And uh, what I'm about to say is not an exaggeration or an overstatement. Um, I've, no, I've worked alongside this lady and this couple for 30 plus years. Uh, they have marinated in the pito and the mamai, and that permeates often throughout our, our district. They've also marinated in the successes and the victories that we've had. Uh, but for me personally, I'm, I'm, I mean, you're leaving. Uh, and, and I get that, I understand that. Yeah, you're going home. Haere tonu ki tō te kainga tūturu o tō māma, tō pito. You know, every so often that this call that comes and resonates within our heart and convinces us to go home. Uh, you both are going to leave a huge void in, in Flaxmere. Um... I'm not sure who's going to cover my butt from now on. <laughs> um, but everything you've done, Karen Harley, over the years, and some of it we will never get to hear about it. Often your exploits aren't trumpeted from the rooftops. And we're never going to hear about 
much of the, your, your exploits which have gone under the radar without expectation or want of reward. And for me and my family personally, I mean, my grandchildren have suckled on your evangelical bosom. And they're your evangelical umbilical cord. <laughs> umbilical cord has been attached to their hearts and their minds. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, you've given them something in their lives that uh, will stand them in good stead. But nevertheless, by uh, Matua, we're here to pay tribute to you. And this, honestly, this is not good enough. Uh, I, I applaud us for doing this, but it's just not good enough. And I know, I know you wanted to go without any fanfare. And, and I get that. I really do. I really do, but there comes a time when you've got to um, adorn yourself in the limelight and allow that light to shine on and so all and sundry can see the goodness and the richness uh, that you've planted in the hearts and minds of the people of Plexme and beyond. I love you very much. Yeah. Just a couple of things here. I'm not a detailed person, so I'll, I'll just read this just briefly. Uh, find my eyes somewhere. So this is recognition of 30 years of service. 30 years. 30 years of dealing with the good, the bad, and the ugly. 30 years. I mean, they established put in a Kuarehua trust, and gee, that trust has gone... I've lost count of the children that you've, you've ministered to fire, you and Harley. I've lost count of them. You've done that. You went on to manage the Open Home Foundation, which was at the time struggling. You then went on to manage the Genesis Trust, supporting the unemployed. These are just a few of the things that you've done. And in 1990, you started running school holiday programs. And you'd have, you'd have, have up to 100 children coming in. In 1997, you were approached by the then Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Jenny Shipley, and you were asked to run the Safer Streets Project in Flaxmere West. This was a three-year three endeavour on your part, but it went well beyond that, well beyond the KPIs and the outputs. And, of course, you, you helped establish the Nanny Corner Park and the Lee Harland Playgrounds in Flaxmere. <laughs> Those are just a few, you know. Um, you, we cannot legislate what you've done. How, how, how do we mimic you? How do we duplicate you? Is that possible? I don't think so. When God made you, uh, you and Harley, he broke the mold. But what I wanted to say here today is, uh, you beautiful people, I uh, just love you so much. And we're going to be at your church, your last church service on Sunday. And I'm really looking forward to what you have to say from the evangelical podium. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. But once again, everybody, on behalf of everybody here, thank you so much for your loyal and relentless service to the people of Flaxme and beyond. So, homai te paki paki, koutama. I think your worship got something for you. Hi. Karen and Hartley, our community is all the richer for have, having, have, 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 having you in it. It is um, an incredible, I have watched you on the journey helping our people now for 10 years, Karen, and, and I haven't met Hartley before, but it is wonderful to meet you today. But we have uh, something very special here for you, and this is our coat of arms. And this only gets given to very, very special people. And it's a, it's a, and and it's a sad day for us that we give it to you as you leave. Um, perhaps we should have given it to you during your journey of great work, but today is a day that we acknowledge and thank you for making our community richer, to making our community happier, and bringing our people to a, a great place. And you have seen so many changes in your time, in the time that you have been working with our community in Flaxmere. So thank you for the wonderful gift and treasures that you have given 
to our people, and here's just a little gift and treasure from us. And some special flowers. Thank you. And you think you've got some little treats in there. Some <laughs> memories of Hastings. Some wonderful memories of Hastings for you to take with you back to Canterbury. We wish you every success in the next part of your life's journey. We hope that it brings much, much happiness and you continue to do your amazing work in another part of our wonderful country. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora everybody. Thank you. You feel your mirrors or mirror? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Thank you for the staff of the council. Well, it was 34 years ago we were called of God to come up here, packed up with our children and headed off up to here. And, uh, of course, we've had to take the words of Jesus and look to him quite often for our strength and ability. It's been a very present help in time of trouble, but we've had some most excellent times. And it's great to see the amount of teams there is in action volunteering and everything else in the area and we wouldn't have achieved much of anything if we didn't have a team behind us all and appreciate that and being put on places such as one of the original directors of Habitat for Humanity and various different ones but uh, it's been good and I'm the one that's generally behind the scenes okay <laughs> Because behind every great woman is a great husband. Kia ora koutou. I suppose really uh, when I was talking to our um, sister-in-law yesterday, as we left North Canterbury and went over to the west coast of the South Island with a, um, a tandem trailer and a few of our possessions to come up north with our children. Continue to come out of Camberley, out of the, um, the suburb. I commenced school as a six-year-old when Camberley first opens it, its doors to students. Therefore, I deem myself as part of the suburb's long and wonderful history and feel justified in representing my neighbourhood on this occasion. Many high achievers and great role models have come out of the school and suburb over many years and will continue to do so if nurtured and protected in an environment and community where they feel safe um, to learn, grow and develop their talents and skills unhindered. Unfortunately, over the last 18 to 24 months, we have seen a disturbing increase in the number of vehicles being operated by reckless individuals who put members of our community at risk. There is no consideration for the safety of others when the offenders are driving vehicles at speed, losing traction with the road and spinning out of control in close proximity to homes, young children on their way to school, senior citizens waiting at the bus shelters, and residents, some in wheelchairs, strolling in the suburb. Not to mention occasions where vehicles have ploughed through fences, narrowly missing homes and occupants. The residents of the seniors' complex located on Takapu Street daily live in fear for their safety. It can be confirmed that the recent streets barbecues held by the Hastings District Council resulted in our most pressing issue being that of road safety. On three consecutive days in February, a vehicle literally burnt the tyres off the rear rims, retrieved the residue, throwing it up over the street signs as, as if marking their territory, then proceeded to drive through the suburb at speed on the bare rim, endangering all and any in his path. The noise was penetrating and his irrational behaviour frightening. After nine months, we now have a CCTV camera strategically placed to capture culprits. However, there are other areas of the streets named above where there is no coverage. Senior citizens have refrained from calling the police to report incidents for fear that they may be targeted in retaliation. Some are too intimidated to be seen videoing for the same reasons. Confronting the culprits has resulted in threats to burn down homes and smash cars. 
We want to endorse and encourage community members and their extended families to support and use the local facilities, such as the community centre, Kirkpatrick Park, the splash pad, the barbecue area, basketball courts and the shopping complex. However, road safety must be rectified before this can be fully utilised with confidence. Section 10 of the Local Government Act 2002 enables and empowers the local decision-making and action for and on behalf of communities and to promote the social, economic, environmental and cultural well-being of communities in the present and for the future. Whilst the data collated, um, thankfully, by Lachlan Crawford compares to national guidelines for where traffic calming measures may be required, it doesn't take into account the high frequency of irresponsible or dangerous driving, placing the community at risk daily. Um, if there is not an immediate course of action to reduce the speed and limit open spaces currently being used to perform these manoeuvres, there will certainly be a fatality in our beautiful suburb. Camberley will make the local and national headlines for all the wrong reasons. Residents are fed up with the intimidating, dangerous, idiotic behaviour and now ask you strongly to consider, as our decision makers, supporting our petition by introducing road modifications and, and enable us to take back a once safe, enjoyable society and community uh, we love and live in. Metaki Mata. Thank you very much. Kia ora, um, can I now invite um, Lockie and Sarath to come forward, please? Um, just Lockie. Thank you. Uh, and councillors, um, I'll now take questions on the paper. Uh, Lockie, did you have anything you'd like to add to your paper since writing it? Uh, no, nothing further to add. Oh, nothing further to add. So you, you have identified here that you are going to, um, over the next six months, follow the progress of what Sally and the community have raised yes. and, and look at appropriate measures. Yes, we'll continue to monitor both CCTV um, and if that um, doesn't create any um, evidence or things for the police, um, we'll look at what other options we have. So have you got some of those options in mind? Uh, not off the top of my head, but there are um, guidelines and things like that that we can look at. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Lawson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I attended some of the barbecues in January, and um, as Sally mentioned, it was absolutely the number one concern for the residents, and particularly our elderly residents, that you know the safety of the streets and be you know the first thing that needs to be sorted out. And you know I can't overemphasise the concern about their safety. Uh, so my question really is about 6.3, and Mia Hazelhurst sort of mentioned it also. I just want to understand what other considerations, based on additional information gathered, might there be? Uh, you're referring to what? 6.3 of the Sorry. paper. So you've said that you'll review the effectiveness of the road policing actions on reducing the frequency of issues notified the community. If ineffective, further measures will need to be considered based on the additional information gathered. So I just want to know a little bit more about the further measures that could be put in place. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I guess the two key parts of 6.3 is ideally the road policing will deal with this completely illegal and irrational behaviour that the community should not have to be putting up with. Um, in terms of as that evidence builds, um, and it is, I know it's really difficult um, with the threatening behaviour of the community to call in, but the police do require the more information, anonymous or not, that they get. It actually helps their resourcing levels um, as well, so they can get additional resourcing into the area. Um, as, you build, as we build a better picture, it is really difficult, nigh on impossible, to engineer out someone who chooses to breach the law in certain ways. But in terms of the intersections um, and working with the community, if we can lock it down to just the intersections, it may be that we constrict them down to the point that only just lets a truck turn. Now, that can limit the... Um, the donuts that are happening in the wider intersections, but it doesn't necessarily stop them doing it in the mid-block. It is really, really difficult to engineer out um, 
illegal behaviour by individuals, but there are some things to try and limit it. Um, well, that's why we want to work with police really strongly and um, very much working with Denise um, group and the community is getting that intelligence um, even in a confidential way so we can actually target our efforts appropriately. The danger is if we build infrastructure just randomly, we may create different issues by just jumping to it. So it's getting a good set of facts. Absolutely recognise what's going on in that community and in a lot of the other areas of the district at the moment um, where we have a lot of this um, person racer issue playing out. Um, ideally, we'd have a lot more police would help, um, but they've got lots of other things that they're dealing with in our community as well. I think um, as we learn, we should be looking at options in between times because we also want to move the camera around um, um, or if funds exist, um, most of the budget's pre-set unless we can reprioritise. We can move it around and get a better picture, but actually the eyes and ears of the community, um, even if it's a quiet word um, where it can't be attributed to them, it's all about building that knowledge um, to us and with the police force because um, ideally if it's one or two, I mean, you'll see in that table... I think it showed 0.6% were going over 20 kilometres hour. So that was seven vehicles in that week. Um, potentially some of these circumstances, it's one or two members of our community who if we can deal with, um, we can get back to a more normal, peaceful life. Councillor Watkins. Yeah, absolutely, we can organise the police. Um, Mr Crawford can confirm. Um, I'm not sure um, he talked to Clint in terms of mo uh, monitoring it, whether the camera picked up that particular activity. So that's the issue when you have a wider area and a camera in one area. Um, we did have the location of the camera in the paper, and I took it out on purpose. Um, if people become aware where it is, so I think, yeah, I'll, we'll double-check with the security team, but my understanding is... Lucky it didn't pick that issue up in February. Yeah, not that I'm aware of, no. Councillor uh, Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just a couple of clarifi clarification questions from me. So in the table in 4.4, uh, where we're looking at the survey results, um, I see there's a survey date. I'm just trying to understand for what period did that survey run for? Was it just one day? Was it a week? Was it a week? Okay. Um, and uh, following on from that and probably extending on a few of the other questions that have already been asked, we've had the CCTV camera in one position, albeit not covering all intersections, I understand that, um, since January. What have we observed so far? Have we observed the behaviour that has been complained about? Okay, so not at that particular no. intersection. Um, finally, um, understanding that knee-jerk reactions in terms of putting in engineered solutions to resolve issues um, is not the best best way forward. Um, I think we'd be really interested when you come back, um, if that is looking like an option, to get a full understanding of timing, costs and effectiveness of any proposed alternative options. Um, and then finally, uh, my final question is the six-month proposed observation period where has that time period come from? I'm just trying to get an understanding of why six months. It was just a, a reasonable period to allow the camera to be moved around a couple of intersections. Um, so, but if we continue the conversations, if we find things in the middle and, and with advice from the police, we would act sooner than that. Um, it was just giving a set time to say, actually, this is working or not working, uh, and then moving from there. Okay, so if we do observe the complaint behaviour on a consistent period inside of that six months, we will action something prior to six months? Um, if the policing action can't deal with that issue um, on its own, then yes, we'd have to look at that. Thank you. Councillor Dixon. Yeah, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Sally, for your very eloquent and well-researched findings and position from the community. My questions are along the lines of Councillor Shollins. Why do we need to wait six months 
when we've got more than ample evidence within the data that's been presented that action could take place now. Um, the key part of that time is if we can capture, capture the evidence for the police to do prosecutions to deal with these likely few individuals, if those individuals were limited out, then some of this problem might go away. So, um, through, through um, just to, to comment, um, Councillor Dixon, it could be that you had a recommendation. That's what I was going to okay, do. Okay, thank you. The I time. also wonder if the Chair of Great Communities, Councillor Lawson, would also work with the Camberley community to make sure that this piece of work with Sally and their team is coming, is, is having effect and, and progressing. So, just an amendment to be that officers are directed to review the effectiveness of the road policing actions immediately and implement action, further actions as appropriate as quickly as possible. I'll second that. I have a mover and a seconder. Okay, I've just got Paletti and Baden. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Um, Sally, well done on um, the presentation. Um, I'm not trying to pick on you, Craig, but this is just a comment. Um, I support the petition, the community's uh, petition, and I just really want to emphasise um, what's happening. Two days ago, um, my brother was a victim of this reckless behaviour. Um, in Flaxmere, he was almost run over by a reckless driver. The reckless driver then chased him down to our street where our house was. At the intersection, he was doing donuts and he was um, calling out racial slurs to my family, um, especially to my mum. My brother's in the house. My mum had to refrain them from jumping over the fence to beat them up. And then they decided just to text me. So I went over and spoke to the family. So, yeah, I just want to emphasize <coughs> that this has been happening long enough. What ev what more evidence do we need? And I, I um, support Malcolm's um, comments as well. I think it's time to do something and action something now because it's been happening for a very long time, especially mm -hmm. in Flaxmere. I went to visit a family who live on in Camberley, um, the Matamata family, and they mentioned that They've been reckless drivers doing burnouts, and one actually hit their car that was in front of their fence. So I think, yeah, it, something should be done now. Thank you. I think the, I think we've probably covered it off in the recommendations. Um, I'm just conscious of time, councillors. Is there anything different that you need to bring to the table that hasn't already been identified? We're talking about time. We're talking about getting some action and making it, um, getting on to this. So is there anything else? And that the next two speakers can add. Yep. Councillor Barber. <laughs> I've got a thought though. Um, just in terms of, I mean, when I'm looking at the photograph. I've been down there with Sally and, and the whānau to have a look at the, that intersection. And I hear what you're saying, Craig, about um, engineering, engineering up. It uh, can be difficult. But if the engineering in the first instance ain't right, so my question is around that intersection, it looks like a rugby field, that, that, that there's a lot of space in that intersection for a suburban uh, street. You know, have we got the design wrong? I mean, you know, it, it seems to me that they can go anywhere in Camberley, but they've come here um, and do their wheelies because there's a heck of a lot of room in that inter intersection to do it. Um, so I'm, I'm, what I'm asking is, have we got the design wrong from the start? Yeah. And that all we need to really do is to directed to the, probably the best dimensions suitable for this type of a, uh, urban site with a whare kaumatua right next door. So, hmm. um, I, I think that, the, as, as Councillor Watkins has said, that a deep design of improvements will come back to Council and has been asked to do that, rather than us go into detail at the moment. Um, Councillor Keith, did you have anything more to add that hasn't already been said? A little different. Yeah, a little different. Uh, <laughs> Sally, thank you for that. That was, you're not a very good councillor, actually. <laughs> you're great. Look, uh, in terms of the CCV cameras, the police, it, it's not going to go away. Because um, you've you got to be up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning when they're doing their donuts. you got to somehow capture it on, on photo, and then the police prioritise. They prioritise. Uh, it, it slips back down the 
the pecking order. So I just want to say that that, that street is littered with evidence. Uh, I don't think we need to hear any more. I think something needs to be done with the chicane, bumper, gutter bars. Thank anyway, you. thank you. Um, and Councillor Shotham, you've already spoken. Um, I'd like to speak to the motion, though. The motion has changed. Okay. Do you want to put the motion up, please, staff? We're just having problems getting the um, motion up on the screen with the oh, okay. uh, skyping. So I'll just right. read it out to you. Yes. Officers are directed to review effectiveness, the effectiveness of road policing actions immediately instead of over the next six months and implement appropriate actions as soon as possible. Sorry. Councillor Shotham. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I absolutely empathise with the petitioners. Um, I can see where the concerns that I have come from and you've spoken beautifully today. Um, my concern here is, is giving our staff appropriate time to properly assess the situation. As has been mentioned today, the CCTV camera that's been put in place so far hasn't captured what they were hoping to and they need an opportunity to move it and observe further so that they can come to us with actions that are appropriate if it is an engineering one. I'm concerned that um, while we're passionate about seeing action, and, and I too am, um, I'm not sure that just press and go is the right solution. So therefore I can't support the motion that's been put forward by Councillor Dixon. Okay. Um, does staff, do you want to... Uh, I mean, it's just really around timing and, um, and you, you know that you'll have some um, ways in which... To, to create some change here. So, so let's through, just ask through you. Your Worship, I think um, pragmatically moving forward, there was the request for the police to come back to the next meeting to talk about what they're able to do in the area. Um, I can have the team do some conceptual work of what would um, make sense and things that would um, maybe just a no-brainer once we do a bit more work and discussion with the police to get on with, maybe an island in that intersection or a couple, um, and then some um, options to add on to um, so, so some maybe. So we'll look up some conceptual work and that way we're moving without necessarily going and putting something in where it doesn't need to be. Great. Thank you. So you'll be comfortable with that, Councillor Shotham? Yes. That approach? Thank you. Councillor Redstone, last, last speaker. Thank you. Um, just checking, can you um, tell me again how long the cameras were actually recording? Look, I think I, I we do. I just want to know whether the community might be aware of the fact there was a camera on the corner, which is, could be the reason why you're not getting any footage. Thank you. Uh, the camera's been installed since mid-January. Um, I'm not aware if the community know exactly where it is. I know Sally does, but I don't, yeah, I don't know if the rest of the community does. It's quite well hidden, I think. Okay, so we've got two things. We're going to have the police come back and report on this, and we've got a, a motion that is going to allow us to deliver some actions. So uh, put that, I have a mover and a seconder. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Thank you very much, Sally and the team. Fred, lovely to see you. Um, thanks for coming in, and thanks for all your hard work. And uh, Councillor Lawson will be your direct contact to follow up with you and, and keep you in the loop what is happening. Thank you so much. Councillors, now I'm going back to um, number two, the item on the agenda, apologies and leave of absence. Any leave of absence required at this stage? No, uh, Paletti, Councillor Ollie. I'm yeah, leaving early today. <laughs> Apart from leaving early today, yes, okay, no further leave of absence. Councillor Shollam. Um, given uh, the changing circumstances at the moment, I no longer le need leave to travel on Thursday and Friday next week. So, great, I thank you. Withdraw that request. <laughs> Good, withdraw that request. Okay, thank you. So, we don't need a move and seconder because there's nothing to move and second. So, that's very good. Seal of register sitting on the table. Conflicts of interest. Can I just have um, Scott come forward, please, and just remind councillors of conflicts of interest just to keep you in a place that is safe, that as we work through this agenda, there may be items that you just may need to consider whether you do have a conflict. I have received two conflicts of interest, one from Councillor Watkins, one from Councillor Lawson. 
on the item about uh, Howard Street? Yes, there, there are a couple of topical matters on the agenda today, and um, we're aware of like uh, members of the community lobbying you about um, what should or should happen shouldn't happen on those things. And I just wanted to take the chance to remind you all in terms of the conflict of interest stuff, it's not just the pecuniary interest that's important, it's perceptions of people um, as to whether um, open minds are being brought and all of that. Um, you're well aware of this, we've talked about it all before, I just wanted to remind you of that and also that the emails that are flying around are, are public documents. Um, so um, it would be helpful if you um, Bore that in mind as to whether you need to step aside from any of the decision, decisions, and I'm happy to, to talk through any issues you might have with you if that helps. Thank you. Um, moving on now to confirmation of minutes, to have a mover and seconder for the minutes. Councillor Shollum, Councillor Dixon, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. I move now to item number nine on page 19. Adoption of the draft annual plan and the consultation document. Welcome to Lex. While we move into quite uncertain times, um, we are very aware and conscious of our community's um, wishes, ability, and to also uh, for rates affordability, and we're also looking at options and opportunities to ensure that we work with partners, both government and private partnerships, to maximise opportunities for our for our community. But today we have a a budget that has been very very carefully worked through, and as you're aware. It's been a very, very complicated time in, in trying to deliver everything, particularly around our water strategy and, and uh, manage all of our uh, service levels for our community. So this is a, um, a massive piece of work that I think staff have brought this to us today. This is a, uh, this is a draft. This is a work in progress. But it's something to start with, to have a conversation with our community on a way forward. Lex, did you want to add anything to the paper? Oh, kia ora koutou, uh, councillors. Uh, just three quick comments from me. Um, you've covered some of it, the worship. Um, the team have formalised your previous guidance on the budget um, through your deliberations in February, so that budget and the supporting documentation has formalised that today. This is essentially a procedural matter in, in that respect. Um, I do just want to note that the budget is subject to um, agenda item number 10 um, and the recommendations within that paper um, regarding the building consenting um, decisions that you're taking. So, uh, But you've previously provided um, clear direction in respect of that matter. The other one is really just in respect to the consultation document. I think um, obviously our context has changed and is changing rapidly and you know, we just need to adapt to that. And so. Um, what we're suggesting is that we make that a lot clearer in the consultation document. We are, we've been chasing our tail there, really, but we take a breather and perhaps what we w we're suggesting we do is uh, change the front of that to um, deliver a number of key messages, really, in terms of how the council proposes to adapt to this changing environment. So some of those messages might be things such as assurances how critical services will continue to be delivered in this environment, um, recognising that this is a unique situation and that the council will need to remain agile and adapt its work programme and how it funds it in the coming months as we learn more. Um, and you've talked about potentially the opportunity to explore external funding opportunities and if those are appropriate, you know, we'd do that in the best interests of our community. So the key there really is agility and most councils are in this space at this time. And I guess the other uh, messages I uh, would like to promote there more clearly is how the council can assist um, both businesses and residents um, in difficulty um, and encourage them to come and talk to us about that and the options available to them. Um, officers are confident that your current um, rates for emission postponement policies allow for that. There's enough flexibility in there 
So in a policy sense, we're okay. So it's reaching out and uh, offering those services. So that, that was really, uh, in terms of the consultation document, um, on the basis that you're agreeable to that, we would look at making some um, quite serious adjustments to the front page. We could circulate those to you before we actually them by email if you want, if you wish. Um, thank me. you. Councillor Dixon. Yeah, thank you, Worship, and thank you, Lex, for that explanation you've put in behind that. Um, I'm just looking at the recommendations because, as you said, this draft was discussed back in February, long before COVID-19, and that's global impact with no one. So I'd just like to add a small amendment to F. That the council delegate to the chief executive the correction and any drafting errors, including any non consequential omissions or amendments and take notice of any impacts of COVID-19 on our wider community. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Chief, you see, happy with that? Happy to see you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kerr. I'll move that. Happy to thank you. Second. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. We have a mover and a seconder. Staff, did you want those recommendations forwarded through to you? Um, Councillor Dixon's got there. Or did you get a note of them when he read them out? <laughs> did you did you get those down? You have got it. I spoke slowly this time. Okay, very good. All right. So I have some some other speakers. Um, Councillor Harvey. Thank you. Um, just questions in regards to the DCs with Howard Street. Are there time to do that now, or are we discussing that, um, confirming that component as well? So, um, yeah. Mr. Allen, did you want to speak to that? Did you yeah, so the question is just in relation to where are we at with, uh, I'm not sure if it's called consultation with uh, property owners, but discussions with them, and are they happy uh, where they have been set? And then I've, the second part to that question is, due to it only being a draft, I'm presuming that it's still, they will have... Um, more of a say in those DC settings. Through your worship. Um, so what really what we've been doing with this, we've, we've signalled that in the draft development contribution policy that there will be a, a proposed Howard Street um, development contribution. Um, we've signalled an amount, which is the amount that we consulted on last year. So that's, that's really just a placeholder. And what we're acknowledging is that there's two processes running parallel. Um, here with uh, the ongoing discussions that we're having with the landowners at Howard Street um, and, and the, the general consultation of the development contribution policy with the wider community. So two, two processes running, running parallel. Um, our aim is to have um, them both completed at the same time so that when the 2020-21 development contribution policy is adopted in June, it, it has the finalised Howard Street development contribution uh, included at the rate that has been set and worked up with the landowners um, in that area. So. so so that's going to cover off the time frame in terms of us completing some of that detailed design work and fully understanding what, what the agreed DCs could be for that area and that will be signed off in June when we so it's so this is a draft, this is a starting point and this isn't the final sum by any Stretch the imagination. Yeah, I suppose that was my point. We just want to make sure that those that um, in the community who are, have an interest in the land are aware that it is a draft. They can still feed in into it. That's what we are um, approving today. It's not absolutely set in stone. That's where you know there is some um, some comments and discussions around that just so that we come to a conclusion. Um, yeah, absolutely. And while it is a draft, um, nothing's set in stone, and we're just working. We'll continue to work with those landowners on the finalisation of that policy and the amount um, prior to its adoption. Yeah, hopefully in June, if we can get several parties, uh, certainly the direction of travel. Um, and we've had lots of discussions with those landowners um, over the last you know, recent weeks and, and well, like most of this year, actually. It was May that you said that you were going to come back to us. Uh, you know, when you'd completed that work too, I think, May. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Shotham. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, relatively inconsequential, but just something that's come to my attention, something for the Chief in terms of minor 
drafting changes. So page 34 of the um, draft plan makes reference to the Abbott bequest. Um, there's been some conversations that have come out of the Landmarks Advisory Group meeting, which was held yesterday, and it quite significantly changes the description in that area. So um, just asking if you could touch base with Rachel and, and the team and update that area. Thank you. Councillor Barber. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, in terms of the, the district plan, I, I, I think it, it looks good um, and it covers off uh, the priorities that we've set. In terms of the, uh, the rates increases um, in light of uh, current events, um, the ability uh, for, for people, especially those that are already struggle to pay their rates, um, you know, have we have we started to think about how how that will be managed um, to to allow people to um, you know those that can't afford their rates to, to pay later or, or I, don't, I don't know I haven't haven't got the haven't got the answers but what I'm yeah you get, get what I'm saying yes thank you thank you Councillor Barber um, Mr Allen did you want to just speak about our rates policy and the opportunities for our community through your worship. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have, um, by law, we have to have a, a rates for emission and postponement policy, so, which we do. Um, that actually provides us with quite a bit of uh, flexibility to, to do a number of things. Um, first, first thing we like to do with, with rate payers if they're struggling is to work with them on a payment plan um, to avoid them getting um, hit with rates penalties. Um, that's not the place we like our rate payers to get into, so we like to work with them on that, and that'll be our first port of call as we work through um, this process if, if rate payers are struggling, that we'll, we'll work with them to, to set up a plan that's, that's achievable. Um, you know, it, like the name of the policy suggests, um, there's, an, there's an opportunity in there for us to postpone rates, so it is only a postponement, um, but we can, again, it's, it's akin to sort of working with the, the rate payer on a, on a plan. Um, and then the last, the last um, avenue we have is around rates, rebates or rates remissions. Um, and, and, that, and there are some um, hardship sort of allowances within the policy that we can we can work our way through. So um, I think you'll recall back in 2016, post Havelock North, um, we re remitted um, a quarter of the water rate for Havelock North residents. So that's just an example of, of what we can do and what council can instruct us to do um, if, if we get into that situation. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Are you comfortable with that, Councillor Barton? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so did everybody, could we just read out those recommendations, uh, that additional amendment? Thank you, Jackie. So, um, F yes. is uh, amended to that the council delegates chief executive the correction of any drafting errors, including any non-consequential omissions or amendments, and take notice of any impacts of COVID-19 COVID on our community. Everyone satisfied with those recommendations? I have a mover and a seconder. I'm going to put that. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Moving on to item number 10. Um, welcome to Mr O'Shaughnessy. Um, Councillors, we've done a great deal of work on this. Um, welcome to Campbell. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to add Happy to move, Your Worship. Thank you. I have a second. Councillor Shollam. Um, any, any further questions or comments on this paper? Mr Shaughnessy sitting there quietly, and so is Campbell. So that's okay. Um, any further questions or comments, Councillors? I have a mover and a second. Oh, Councillor Yeah, Councilor just, Barber? just in terms of teasing up the... Yeah. Where's John? Just in terms of teasing up the... The, the cost structure, and you, you would have you would have um, um, you know been in contact with with uh, those out in the industry. Are you, are you getting any any feeling of, of, of how that's going down? Excuse me, John. Can you? Uh, there's probably two aspects there. We're just trying to get a date for our developers meeting so that we can have that during the consultation period uh, so that we're pretty upfront about the new changes. And then secondly, we're keeping a pretty close eye on the, on the work volumes. So whether we see a turn in the next two, probably two to three weeks, just to see if those volumes stay up. 
they change. So, uh, yep, we've managed to get a contractor signed up, but we may yet be in a turned environment, so we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Through your worship, so we have uh, two recommendations in your report um, from the Risk and Assurance Committee. Um, issue one of those is the uh, update of the, um, our, our health and safety policy. Um, that was hasn't yet actually been amended. The, the committee gave some instructions for that to be changed, and that, that is yet to be done. So we'll remove that one from today's recommendations. We'll bring that one back um, at a later date. Um, but what you do have there, and you have a copy um, under separate attachment, is the Treasury Management Policy. Uh, that's the, the so uh, June last year we appointed new a new treasury advisor, Bancorp uh, Treasury Services, uh, and they've um, had a, a fresh look at our uh, treasury policy, um, and a copy of that's attached to your agenda. Uh, there's just a, a couple of um, sort of highlight issues that we've got in there. Um, given our the, the debts increasing, we've got a number of debt maturities coming through. Um, there's a delegation to, in there to increase our authority our daily limits. Um, from 20 million to 40 million, so sometimes we have um, quite significant um, debt rolling over, and that just allows us to do that plus our, our daily transactions. Um, we have um, looked at our external ratios uh, as well and made some, some changes there and some definitions to our liquidity. Um, so, more sort of technical issues and some amendments in the policy, uh, and th this has been in detail through the Risk and Insurance Committee. So, really just happy to take questions, Your Worship. Thank you. Did any of the um, Risk and Assurance Committee members want to add anything? No? Okay, thank you. Any questions, councillors? No? Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Very happy to move. Thank you. Councillor Watkins, second Councillor Travis. Um, no further questions. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Thank you. That's passed. A risk appetite statement. Welcome to Regan. This has been a major project. For a long time, yeah, thank you, and um, a lot of work has gone into this. Um, good afternoon, councillors. Yes, uh, the paper can be taken as read, but just as a, a couple of comments on that, this is really bringing back to you the work the Risk and Assurance Committee has done to evolve a reasonable statement of risk appetite for us to then roll through the rest of the organisation. So, just very briefly, risk appetite for those we haven't had the conversation is really about how much. The organisation is prepared to put at risk to achieve, to achieve its objectives. Um, to put it a bit more tangibly, it's really how brave do you want the officers to be while they're doing their job and how sure do you want them to be that it's going to work out right. So it's a little bit more tangible. We've tried to align this idea around the LTP objectives because those are the things that you've set as strategic goals for the organisation to deliver. So they form around those strands. And essentially, there's an overarching statement to say, how brave do you want them to be, or the organisation to be, I should say. And then there's a series of measures for each of those so we can actually get an idea of whether we're operating within the, the surety kind of tolerances that were felt to be appropriate. So, yeah, happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Worship. Um, thank you, Regan. Um, I found this whole process really fascinating and a, and a great learning curve. And I note that most of the things that we do, our tolerance or appetite is very much in that um, conservative, moderate, safe space. So my question is actually flipping it round about, is there somebody making sure we don't become so safe that we can no longer operate? Yes, it's a very good question. Uh, we just had some risk management training provided by an external consultant to the staff. One of the things that he covered was this idea of a minimum risk appetite, so to speak, and a zone in which we're being too safe and we should push ourselves a bit further. 
that is embodied in the statements in the tolerance areas. Each tolerance has a, a lower limit as well as an upper bound, so we can get an indication of whether we're not doing enough or whether we're going too far. So it is there as a way to get an idea of whether we're operating in a, a comfortable zone, which does include a, a minimum level of um, getting out there and doing things. Thank you. Councillor, oh, so Councillor Travis. I'd just like to thank you sincerely for the work that has been done around that whole vocabulary area. I was quite uncomfortable the last time we looked at this. I felt the words uh, depicted didn't actually represent the, the emotions behind it, and I feel really comfortable. So well done, everybody. Thank you, Councillor Travis. Councillor Shollum. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, and uh, echoing fellow councillors' views, thank you for the work that's gone into this. Um, I found the uh, risk appetite statement actually quite interesting reading, and it was broken down in a way that was understandable. So I appreciate the efforts made. Um, I also was heartened as I went through, and I think it's something that we all need to acknowledge here, that whilst our overall uh, risk appetite might be seen as conservative, there are areas within our operations where we are more measured or justified and not all as conservative. Um, and I was uh, happy to hear your answer to Councillor Kerr's question then. Um, so I just really wanted to highlight that, that we are not um, uh, stalling progression within council and we are actually not completely risk adverse in some areas, but there are certain areas where we are very conservative. Thank you. And risk needs to reflect on our community and their aspirations and vision for us as well. So yes, we might think of something's really risky or um, needs to be softened, but actually we know what our community and we may need to keep talking to them to see where that risk sits. Thank you, Councillor Travis. Yes, Ms. Allen. I have a second to Councillor Shollum. Uh, through you, Worship. I, I did have a, a text from uh, Mr. Nichols earlier today. Um, he fully anticipated that he would be here, um, but given the other circumstances that are going on in the world at the moment, he is on one of his other boards, has some more pressing um, matters to attend to. But um, he's certainly been very complimentary of the process that Regan's run uh, through this and developing this, this, this appetite structure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Allen. So I have a mover and second. I'm going to put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Thank you, Regan, for the enormous amount of work that's gone into that. Good, good, if we like that, fun, fantastic. Uh, welcome to Mr Hosford, uh, some draft uh, ground leases, um, councillors, the recommendations on page 46. Thank you. Councillor Watkins has moved. Do I have a seconder? We have... That, thank you. I was going to say, do we have anybody else awake today? <laughs> Councillor O'Keefe, we do. Thank you. Good. Good. Excellent. So we've got a move in a seconder. Mr Hosford, did you want to add anything? Oh, I have got a couple of questions. Councillor Kerr and Councillor Redstone. Can we just get recommendation B tidied up? The, the, there's a, it just doesn't make English, but we know what you mean. Thank you. Yes. Could we just tidy up there, please? Perhaps, Scott, you might like to do that. Or Jackie, who would like to change that? Yeah. Okay. Any further uh, questions, Councillor Redstone? Thank you. I'm, I know they're all three entirely different options. One of them's got a peppercorn lease, um, and the other two are 1040 a year. I just wondered with the Chatham one in resource, are they okay to pay the thousand and forty a year? I'm just wondering where they get that amount from and whether we have any other options for them. We are working on other options to get them for funding to help them. Um, I think they are um, I've had two hates from the lady last week. Last week. Good. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, so we have a mover and a seconder. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, 
we've got Kevin next with the Municipal Building um, application for external funding. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Um, as part of the revenue strategy for the Municipal Building Redevelopment, uh, we were hoping to apply to Eastland Central Community Trust for $250,000, and to do that, we need a resolution from the Council um, to move forward, so hoping to get a resolution. So happy to answer any questions. More than happy to move, Your Worship. Okay, thank you very much, <coughs> Councillor Dixon. Count thank you, Councillor Lawson, who seconded. Um, any, any further comments or questions? I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, Kev. You've waited patiently. Um, I'm now moving on to, do I want to go to Mel next? Who have we got? Sarath next. You are. Oh, thank you. And so uh, Mr Thu is going to take us through. This is Wainako Village. Welcome to our Wainako team down there. Mike and Emma. I'm sorry, I don't know the other ladies. Jane. Jane. Welcome, Jane. So, uh, Mr Thu, you'll take us through this paper. Um, very, very quickly. Um, um, councillors, this is just purely an administrative matter. So, um, previously, it made decisions to go out and consult on the um, road stoppings. Um, that submission period has closed with no, um, no submissions against that road stopping. So, we're just asking for your approval now to proceed through actioning it and also to commence the stopping process on Mitchell Street. Thank you. Come to us before. Mm -hmm. um, Councillor Barber. I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. Seconder, Councillor Redstone. Any further questions or comments to Mr Thu? Thank you. I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That's carried. Item 16. Um, welcome, Mel. Parking controls. All those pages of work that you do with the parking controls. And under the, under the Act, it has to come to Council and not a uh, committee... Um, Council Committee. So you've waited a long time today. There's lots of work gotten into there. Councillors, any questions on any of those parking suggestions that Mel has presented today? Any questions? Councillor Shonham? Um, a bizarre but slight word of warning around a couple of them. Um, so uh, your Cornwall Park and Roberts Streets, um, uh, areas for mobility uh, spots, absolutely endorse them and are necessary. Um, having children in the age range I do, I just need to make you aware that those are Pokemon Go raiding spots and lots of people like parking there to play Pokemon Go. So they'll probably have to be monitored quite closely when they first go in. <laughs> Gosh, it's a third world problem, isn't it? <laughs> um, can I just um, acknowledge Councillor Dixon because... That he has moved, and you've moved very quickly to address the um, disability park um, in Tamoina Road. So, so I think that's really, really important. So, thank you for doing that so quickly. No, that's okay. Thank you. The recommendation. So, thank we, you. So, so it, okay, so we've got a mover and a seconder. Count, Councillor Dixon and Councillor O'Keefe. Any questions to Mel? Everyone satisfied? We've got the right parking slots. Mr. O'Shaughnessy, did you want to add anything? I just wanted to ask no question. What's the Pokemon Shop? <laughs> 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 Do you want me to ask this question? Yes. <laughs> no, that involves going outside. <laughs> Do you want me to explain it to you, John? No, no, Makes you're sense. all good, thank you. Uh, talk to Wendy at tea time. Thanks very much. We have a move and a second. I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. Any against? Thank you, carried. Thank you, Mel. Um, we have got the, um, the the remits, and at this stage, I'm going to hold this paper over. We just don't know if the local government conference is is continuing. Um, I've just had a text from the chairs of Zone Three. They're asking my opinion, but they're suggesting that it be cancelled the Zone Three meeting. So I think we'll hold this paper over and leave it on the table. Thank you. Item number eighteen. Um, health and Safety Quarterly Report. Welcome to Jenny. There's nothing more important than this report at the moment. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so, yes, we've had a 
this report goes up till the end of 2019, so it's for the quarter two report. Um, it was a su successful quarter at council um, with you know good good numbers of people in our facilities. We did have some incidents. We always have some incidents, um, but the numbers were low, especially when you. Like I've said before, we had a really large number of people coming through those facilities. So when you put that into context, it was really successful. So um, I take the report largely as read, but I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Jenny. Any questions, councillors? The health and safety report. Can, do I have a mover and a seconder, please? Council, yes? Councillor Barb. Yeah, just in terms of um, uh, going forward and... In, 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 in in, in current conditions, um, I mean, uh, are, are we are we ready? Do we have contingencies in place to to cope with whatever layoffs, sick people, whatever is going to going to happen? I mean, last last month's report's good. Next month's report's probably going to be up to shoot. So um, yeah. we, we can we can just talk about that now. They need to wait till next month. Roman, would you like to answer? Through you, Madam Chair, thanks uh, very much, Councillor Barber. We've done a lot of work since um, the beginning of January. We um, briefed the Council earlier in the week, but I don't think that you were able to make that. So we're very happy to um, talk some of that through with you in a bit more detail, if you would like. Um, but yes, I um, imagine our absenteeism levels, um, at, yeah, it's a, it's a whole new world. Councillor Barber, did you want yeah. to add anything? No, just, further questions? you know, we... we um, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll have a look at that report, but I, I'm, I'm happy we've we've kind of covered off the basis. But uh, it's, it's unknown territory, so uh, we we'll just have to navigate it as we go. Thank you, and 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 I think that um, from councillors' um, discussions this morning, team, I think that for us the most important thing is to see an organisation communications plan um, moving forward, and and seeing that plan and seeing how we how we're going to manage both the internal councillor communications for in, in terms of the pandemic plan. Thank you. So no further questions on this report. Thank you, Jenny. I have a mover and seconder. Councillor Lawson, seconder. Councillor Shottam. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, item number 19. Uh, this is um, Councillor Dixon's Civic and Administration, Mr Smith has um, presented this paper. Would the Chairman like to add anything? Thank you, Worship. Yes, they probably agree. The only thing that we have not had yet is we need to be addressed we need to do this in conjunction with the communications team and the media team so it's effective and that word speak and community understands. Thank you. Mr Smith, did you want to add anything? Yes, uh, just to that end, especially the grants policy, the, the comms team are helping us give that the, um, the once over to um, translate it from bureaucrat to public, and including picking up um, a couple of typos that were deliberately left in there. Aha, yeah. uh -huh, like that. Um, and so, and Councillor Dixon, will you follow up with that too? Um, thank you. Okay, All right, Councillor Dixon moved, Councillor Lawson second. Any further questions? Put that all those in favour, please say aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, the Coastal Hazard Strategy Joint Committee, and this is the um, minutes from that Joint Committee. Uh, would our representatives of the Joint Committee like to add anything? Councillor Redstone. Thank you. Just um, my question is, I think we appointed, or, or do we actually appoint an alternate, and I think it was Councillor Corbyn, but do we know that or not necessarily? Jackie, do we need to note that alternative person? Sorry. Um, it, it, we picked it up last time and noted it um, as, as part of the recommendations to council last time. So he is listed as an alternate in our records and um, the regional council have been advised. So. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor
Um, I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Just a matter of actions from this meeting. Did we record what Councillor Watkins asked about getting a report from the police on the petition? Yes. Thank you very much. Just didn't need to clarify that. Okay, so we're at item 21. Um, so, uh, any, so this is from uh, Miss Evans. Did you want to comment on, on this? Sorry. So this, these are the recommendations from the, the Māori Standing Committee yes. um, for the appointments to uh, council, council committees. So it's just here for your ratification. Thank you. Dr Graham, did you want to add anything? No. Thank you, Councillor Travis. Seconded, Councillor Sears. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Councillors? Uh, no, you're a bit slow. Uh, Councillor Travis, Councillor Sears. All those in favour, please say aye. Are you going? Thank you, that's carried. Um, item 22, this is the updated meeting schedule changes. Business as usual. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Lawson, Councillor Sears. Any questions on any of those changes, councillors? I'm going to put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you, that's carried. Um, item 23. Um, items under action, if we could just go through these actions uh, and ensure that uh, any, any questions on any of these actions, please, councillors? So some of the actions haven't been completed, as you'll see here, like the DCs, like the rating. Any questions, councillors? Councillor Shalom. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, given the current climate, um, I suggest we probably won't see a lot of movement in this area in the near future, and I'm supportive of that because I can see where staff are investing their time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, have a move up, please. Councillor Travis, seconded Councillor Kerr. Any further questions or comments? I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Any against? Thank you. That is carried. Um, now we recommend to exclude the public. Before we do so, we have um, these items in public excluded. Could somebody, Chief Executive, take us through and or Mr. Allen, and tell us why these these items are in the public excluded part of our agenda. Thank you. Uh, through your worship. So uh, we have three three items on the agenda that are public excluded. Um, the horse of the year. Um, it's an appointment of a director, um, and to protect his privacy, um, and to enable free and frank conversation um, amongst councillors. Um, that's why that one's being uh, public recommended to be public excluded. Um, Howard Street Stormwater Detention Area and Land Acquisition uh, relates to uh, the acquisition of land um, and to protect the uh, Council's position in commercial negotiations. And, and likewise with flex, the Flax Bear Land Holdings, uh, that's, that's in regards to land that we're to sell. Um, and that again is to protect Council's commercial position um, and decision making um, in that regard. So happy to take any questions. Okay, so uh, there's no further questions about these items being... In, oh, Tan? Okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder, please? That this is to move that these items will be heard in a public excluded part of the meeting. Councillor Barber, second. No further comments? No questions? All right, I put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Thank you. The, we now move into the public excluded part of the agenda. And the live streaming will be closed. Yes, thank you. I now invite 